Welcome back to Weed Wednesday. It is your weekly grow show for 2013. I'm Vader, and this week we're mostly answering questions. We didn't have a ton going on, and we weren't quite ready to harvest and trim everything up. So that'll come on another episode. It may even be split up into a Stony Sunday episode. Since it's summer, I'm going to try and start putting out some more videos. We'll see how that turns out. But in the meantime, thanks for joining us, and let's get to our episode. I was always searching for the highest quality cannabis. Well, it turned out, if you want something done right, you're just going to have to do it yourself. So I had some extra space at the facility that I needed to fill, so we went ahead and from the 75 alien abduction that we popped, we took 50 of them down to the facility, so that left us with about 25. I did lose one of them. I don't know what happened, but apparently it didn't like the environment. Hey, they're not all going to be winners. Everything is looking nice and healthy and green. To fill in the extra space for the other side inside of this 5x10 tent, Went ahead and pop some devil's tear seeds. Thought we'd bring up something a little bit older. Now since I needed to fill a whole side, I went ahead and popped three packs. That's 30 seeds. Because we assume half are going to be male. I set 30 cups with cocoa. And now we're just dropping the seeds in. We're going to try to put them taproot down, but since they're just barely poking out, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Taking a look over at the harvested sleeping dog and black cauldron. Everything's coming along really good, but they probably need at least another three or four days, so I won't be able to harvest everything and trim it till the weekend. Just taking it nice and slow and being patient. We got 50% humidity, 78 degrees. Just barely a little bit of air movement coming from the carbon filter Vortec fan that's pulling air out, allowing fresh air in. Everything's looking really frosty. See all the leaves have dried up that are those larger fan leaves. So something sticky icky to look forward to later on. Other than that, we went ahead and sprayed down with our Rizotonic spray, our new seedlings here of our alien abduction, and I sprayed a little bit on top for the new seedlings that are going to be coming through their medium on the Devil's Tear Cups. But for now, let's go ahead and move on. Okay, well, we're going to jump into some questions. This week, we are using the Sherlock. Dug this on out. Now, it's just a simple piece. Nothing special about it. No down stem. Just a uh, gravity bubbler, as they would say. Pretty nice and beautiful. We called this Merlin. It's kind of like a dragon. I haven't seen a lot of Sherlock's um, made lately that are as nice as this piece. They got this way back in the day, a long time ago. So, stoked about that. And uh, today, we are smoking on some Bubble Crush. So, we ran some test round of that uh, at down the facility. So, we were trying that out. Uh, this is also an F2. Ooh. So yeah, with this one, continuing uh, doing some breeding experiments. But Bubba Kush is a favorite of mine, so I definitely try and keep it around. Okay. Let's see. Um, oh, worm casting vids. We have run a worm casting vid before in the past. And we will do more composting and worm castings for veganic and organic 
style showings. But right now I'm really trying to reset up the facilities because I had to move a whole facility for the collective and we had to move my personal home because we moved complete area. So trying to get everything back into gear is really the biggest thing when you're composting or running gardening. It takes a couple of years just to start like amending and getting all the soil and everything set. So we now have to reset everything. It's just gonna take some time, but you can go check out those videos. We have talked about them before, but I definitely would like to get back to that stuff. So that's pretty much that. How much can a single plant harvest? Obviously this really depends on what kind of grow methods and everything like that. Grow outdoors, get crazy. You know, people got 10 pound plants or more crazy stuff. With the system we run, if you top, Veg up for an extra couple weeks. Really cut up the lower stuff. You can get a good four or five ounces out of a single plant. Generally, <laughs> I would definitely say you're probably two to three ounces. Uh, that's about how it goes. If you're getting less than that, then you're probably running smaller, lighter weight systems. See, homebrew use cure buds in place of hops. Uh, yeah, so the general idea for homebrewing with infusing cannabis into your beer is that you would replace your dry hopping hops with cannabis itself. And then there's also been some stuff about mixing it, but that didn't seem to be as prevalent. Some people are talking about dropping like keef and things like that uh, into their dry hop with their hops, but from everything I have read about the people who have done it before, it sounds like you would just replace it, so. I don't know, we haven't actually done it yet. That'll be the fun thing we get to do this summer. We'll test it out. Uh, I did definitely saw a lot of uh, comments going back and forth about the home brewing, so. It's definitely something I'm interested in doing and we will discover it together. All right. Storing and freezing pollen, look, dry freezing. So you vac all the air out, you dry freeze the pollen itself, it'll last shit ton of time at least 10 years um and you're gonna want to like ah, fuck i don't know cryo freeze it in your normal freezer just throwing some pollen things in there you get a couple of years with it it'll slowly degrade after about six months very quickly so story mail pollen works probably for about six to nine months if you just like take the little flowers and throw them in a little vial like i showed you guys before just a real simple method if you really want it to last like two or three years just make sure it's just pure pollen all by itself Try and get the moisture as low as possible by vacuuming all the air out, but you definitely don't want to let it dry out or it'll lose its uh, genetic kick. So don't let the pollen dry all the way out. Just leave it in its moist form, just as pollen itself. Vac all the air out, and that is the best way to store your pollen for probably about two to three years, and it'll slowly start to degrade faster and faster. Unless you freeze it at a like frozen level, cryoing. All right. Cocoa holes, moisture, need to dry out. I get this all the time. Every once in a while, someone is saying that like, oh, you have to dry out cocoa. You have to dry out cocoa. Why are you watering it so much? You can treat cocoa as a hydroponic medium or you can treat it like a soil medium. You can let things dry out. Your plants will take a little bit longer to get in and kick into gear and it'll operate very much like soil. We run it all the time and it's a really simple, easy method, especially if you don't have a lot of equipment. You can get some incredible results just from that. The Witches Brew Harvest, those are top feed systems. Real simple, no big deal. But in like a flood drain system or uh, any recycling system, you can water them a lot, treat them just like hydroponics. The more oxygenated water you're getting in there, the more available oxygen and nutrients are available for the plant. If you let them dry up, they won't have, be able to get to the nutrients. They'll be searching for more water. And yes, they will get the oxygen they need, but they will be missing out on the water and the nutrients. So they'll be taking that process, building roots, trying to find water. If you leave them in a hydroponic system, you give them lots of oxygen in their water with the nutrients available, then their roots grow at the same time. You get huge root systems and you will also get a good sized plant. So grows faster with hydroponics, air in the water. You can treat cocoa like hydroponics. Someone was asking about a BTU calculation or there was the same person I think about the cocoa. I don't know exactly what you're asking. If you're asking about air conditioners and like what the calculations would be for like how many lights you have, you know, obviously that's gonna depend on what lights you're running, whether you're air cooling them, what the environment is like. Um, you know, is it really hot? Is it really humid? Is it hot and humid? 
biggest thing I can tell you with recommending air conditioners is a simple one, is get the biggest air conditioner that your space can handle or that you can afford, uh, that the power can be able to handle. The bigger air conditioners are gonna cool the room down faster and then they're gonna stay off. Everything's gonna be good and then when it needs to turn back on again, boom, it'll cool it down faster again. They are actually more efficient. You get a smaller air conditioner, it may or may not be able to keep up with the heat. It may be running all the time. You're, it's not going to be as efficient. So the recommendation is to get the largest air conditioner you can handle. Overkill air conditioners are good for an area. Underkill is the problem. So just go big. Let's see. Oh, someone was saying that uh, there was recommendations that you stop using molasses after week five or that all of your stuff is going to taste really bad. And that is not true at all. Um, I definitely wouldn't be giving it tons of molasses in general. That's something that you just kind of want to be careful with. But no, people run it all the way through harvest with their enzymes just the same way. So that shouldn't be an issue. I think that's just more of a sort of urban myth that somebody uh, anecdotally came up with because they had an issue. Let's see. Also, soil growing gets into really, really crazy stuff with micro herds. So using molasses and things like that and promoting certain kinds of micro herds, maybe it had something to do with that, but that would be like a whole intriguing lecture all on itself. All right, grown in straight perlite. Have I ever grown in straight perlite? Uh, yes, yes I've grown in straight perlite. Someone was mentioning that it was a haven for fungus gnats and that may be true. When I grew in perlite, I did not have a fungus snap problem at the time. Um, I generally don't indoors. We keep everything super clean. Once you get to like outdoor growing or if you're growing organically, you're just gonna have to put up with bugs. So you have to, a whole new phase of ideas of the way you have to attack your garden. But hydroponics, the great thing is, is that if you start clean, it's gonna stay clean. So that's wonderful. With perlite, uh, my biggest issue with perlite it grew perfectly, it's a great medium, there's nothing wrong with it, except for the fact that it gets everywhere and that even the finer particle stuff has lots of dust, not something I'm into. So perlite just ends up being a pain in the butt for that. Also, then you just have to throw it all away. It's one reason I don't really use rock wool anymore, is you just throw it all away. I like cocoa and I don't put perlite in it on purpose because I ran systems with just straight cocoa, with nice cocoa flock versus same thing with perlite. and. It works just as good, if not better. And I can take my cocoa and compost it afterwards. All I have to do is flush it out if I'm using a non-organic system, like the Canna cocoa line. Or if we're using an organic system line, you can just compost it automatically. So it just works really well in the yard. That's why I like cocoa. Uh, and that's why I prefer to recommend it to a lot of new growers, because most people have a place that they can go just kind of chuck the cocoa and it's not really a big deal. But perlite itself, great growing medium, gets all over the place. Not really a favorite of mine. Okay, well, I think that was it for the questions. Kind of haphazard, but yeah. We'll be back again another time. Ooh. Thanks for joining me this week. But until next time, I'm Vader, and I'll see you later.